people who are online. Um, I know you can't see my face, but hopefully you will be able to hear us clearly. Um, anyway, so my name is Fee Nguyen. I'm the Director for Student Affairs. Um, my office is over in the Center City campus, and I am the liaison for the graduate student organizations. Um, with me is Maggie Gordon. Hi everyone, so I am, uh, you probably got an email from me inviting you to come here. So thank you all for coming, we're happy to see you. Um, I will be working a lot with you guys. Um, one of my main responsibilities is working with you guys in everything from your registration process with your organizations to full on event planning and programming, things like that. So um, if you need help with something like that, absolutely come talk to me, talk to Fee, talk to anybody in our office and we'd be happy to help you. Okay, it worked. Yay. All right, so we put our pictures up there for those of you who are online. That's Maggie. That's me. Um, Sandra and Taz. Taz could not be with us today, um, but he and Sandra, um, you all know them very well. They work with the student organizations from the Office of Graduate Studies. Okay, so this is a really important slide because this is where I sort of explain who you go to for the things that you need. So the first slide is the planning events and marketing. Um, and that is if you just need event support, marketing support, um, things like that, uh, that you can use uh, our office, Student Affairs. Um, you need suggestions um, to conceptualize your event idea, your program, that would be our office. Um, the other thing that we do, which, you know, um, is not so fun, is the policies and procedures. So my email is phi at drexel.edu, um, Maggie as well, um, and we deal with contracts we'll be talking about later on. And if there's any sort of um, gray area where you are thinking, um, hmm, I wonder if we need to get this approved. That would be me um, or Maggie. That would be student affairs. In regards to reimbursement and receipts, who you will hear about um, and hear from today, that will be the Office of Graduate Studies. Your main contact usually will be either Sandra or Taz. Um, and this is for things like processing uh, refunds, processing reimbursements, um, getting payments made out for some of your events. Um, maybe making a payment via credit card, via phone to a restaurant. That would be Taz, that would be Sandra, that would be the Office of Graduate Studies. Um, they deal with the forms and the processing. So that leaves the GSA, the Graduate Student Association, they are everything having to do with the event approvals, funding, and budgeting. So they say yes, but they don't actually do um, the check requests because you need staff for that. Um, so for them, you would go to them for um, the approvals, the online um, event forms, the post-event forms, the pre-event forms, which you'll hear from them later on today as well. Does that make sense? Yes. Will this be available for us to upload a little email to us after the meeting? It'll actually be available on the GSA website. Um, and that's a great question um, for our online uh, folks. The question was, will this be available after the event? Um, yes, it will be on the GSA site um, along with the recording. Okay. Hi everybody, so now it's my turn. The recognition process. Um, so the recognition process is a lot easier than it might seem like. So the biggest thing and the first thing that you need to do is to be able to log in and access Dragon Link. 
How you do that is through your Drexel 1. Um, a lot of you may know Dragon Link. It was formerly Collegiate Link. Um, the name has been changed. So if you log in to your Drexel 1 and you click over to the Drexel tab, there's a box on the left-hand side and it'll say Dragon Link right there. So you log in that way. Um, and then you upload all this information that you see here, a name, description, a logo or picture, things like that. And then the second step, which you all are doing right now, is attending the Sioux training, which is fabulous. Thank you all so much again for being here. Um, and then the final step is to complete the student organization orientation training quiz, um, which you will also be able to access through Dragon Link as well. Um, and then as a last final step, um, we need you to submit the name and contact information of your faculty advisor so that we can verify that they will be your faculty advisor for the upcoming year and I will be e emailing them directly to confirm with them. So is there any questions about the recognition process before I move on? Fantastic. All right, so Continuing about DragonLink, DragonLink is an incredible tool. There are so many things that you can do with it, and we highly encourage you to take advantage of it. Um, there's, like I said, you can do so many things. Adding members, you can message all your members. Um, one way that some of our organizations like to use it if they have a lot of members is that they will email um, like a smaller group like their exec board or officers or things like that, and I think that's a great suggestion if you do have a lot of members. Um, and we, our Office of Student Affairs, we use it to contact you as well. Um, so it's important that you keep your officer information up to date um, so that when you get emails, like the one I sent you to come here today, the right people are getting it. Um, and like I said earlier, uh, the faculty advisor, make sure you upload their information in there as well. Um, and just it's important to note that you must log in at least once to Dragon Link in order for it to sort of kick in. Um, so what that means is DragonLink is sometimes funny. If somebody hasn't logged in before, it's sometimes weird if somebody message, if a, like you as a leader message somebody, it doesn't always go through. So make sure you encourage and really stress to your members that they do sign in at least once to check what's going on. And I also would recommend to them that they log in and see what's going on because many of our organizations post all the information about the great things that they're doing. Um, and it would be really great for your members to see those things as well. Any questions about Dragon Week? Fantastic. So moving on to planning and hosting events. Um, policies and procedures are a little different depending on whether you're on University City or Center City campus. Um, for example, up in here in University City, um, there's an exclusivity contract with Sodexo for things like food. Um, so if you are going to order food or something like that, it has to be done with Sodexo. Down in Center City, we are not bound by that. So we can do things like order food from local restaurants and things like that. Um, so just something to keep in mind when you are planning events. Um, and there are always exceptions possible, um, but make sure you run that through business services if you're going to do something like that. Um, and another resource that's available for you is for the event services website. They have a ton of information, um, planning guides, depending on whether your organization or department or things like that, which are really, really helpful. Um, and then there's more information here. If you need something like audiovisual support for University City, um, we recommend, and I, they're absolutely great that you use Dust. It's the Drexel University Student Tech. And for a small fee, they'll do all of this kind of stuff that you see today um, at a small fee. And it's definitely a fraction of the cost of hiring somebody external to come and do sound and AV and things like that. Um, and then you can always contact IMS for any sort of other audiovisual, technical equipment, things like that. Um, working with an organization or business with no Drexel affiliation, run it through business and event services. Um, they'll know what to do, they'll be able to help you. Sure. I have two questions. Uh, the first question is on food. If we're in the center city of public health, mm -hmm. and we want to do an event in University City with University City campus? If it's going to be on University City campus, you have to go through Sodexo. 
um, even though you are a Center City student. So for those of you online, the question was if you are a Center City-based organization and you're holding an event on University City, are you still bound by the, um, the Sodexo contract? And the answer is yes, you are. And the second question was? Is the audio-visual, is that the ranking equipment or just setting it up? The, like the, uh, the speaker? The, the eight. Oh, sorry. Oh. You say you can rank the equipment for a fee? Actually, um, it depends. It might be free. Yeah. So the question is about, for those of you online, about renting and using equipment. Um, it's possible to rent depending on um, what it is, and that has how the price will vary as well, and you can also have them come set up and use it. It's only on campus, or can you bring it off campus? If you're renting it, you can bring it off campus. Yeah, so if you're renting it, you can bring it off campus. Yeah. And you're responsible for it. Yeah. Any other questions before we move on? Yeah. <laughs> That's an advantage of being recognized. You know? And that, yeah, that's a privilege that comes with being a recognized organization. So that's great. Any other questions before we move on? No. So then, moving on, you're planning your event, you've got the AV, you've got the space, you've got food. How do you get people to come? So marketing is obviously very important. Uh, these are some tips for doing that successfully. So we definitely recommend that you are on social media. Um, we're all always on social media, always checking it, always updating, always posting. People are always on it. It's a fabulous way to reach people. I know that you know everybody gets so many emails a day, and you know by a show of hands, how often do you get emails and you just you just delete them? Yeah. Yeah, so we don't want your event emails to be deleted. So social <coughs> media is a fabulous way to do that. Um, and then the next thing that we definitely recommend is tell a friend to tell a friend. Students are way more likely to come to events if a friend says to them, hey, I heard about this great event, let's go. Um, so definitely spread the word that way as well. And you'll get a lot of students, friends of friends of friends, and it before you know it becomes this great big network of people who are interested in coming to what you're doing. The next thing is flyers. Um, believe it or not, I have seen so many people reading flyers here, it's incredible. Um, people are always standing, I always see people standing by bulletin boards reading flyers and things like that, so that's definitely a great way to catch it to people's attention that way as well. Um, yeah, and we can always help you market that through our office. We're always on, like I said, Facebook and Twitter, we're always posting things. Um, and that's, that's a great way. Post it on every bulletin board you can and you'll definitely reach a lot of people. And then finally, we suggest creating an RSVP. It's great information for you to know who's coming, who's interested, what gets good attendance, what maybe you could improve on. Um, and that way it also helps with things like picking a space to do or, was, or ordering food or something like that. Sure, question. Is there an approval process that we need to go to distribute flyers? Yes, so if you're, that's a great question, I forgot to mention that. So if you're in University City, you have to get it approved by the Crease Student Center. And if you're down in Center City, you have to get it approved by our office. So the question was about um, approval, approving flyers. Great. All right, so um, I think Maggie kind of talked a little bit already about the catering. Um, exclusivity contract, um, you, one of the things I'd like to add to that is you can work with Chestnut Street caterers um, to secure food from Subway, Chick-fil-A, or that um, burrito place. Um, <laughs> what is that burrito, who knows? Yeah, burrito. Yes, exactly, there you go. Um, and their email is actually chestnutstreetcaterers at drexel.edu. So um, you can um, email them if you have quick questions, that sort of thing, without submitting your um, event planning uh, form. Um, I'd like to add that some of you, um, if you are interested in using a, a restaurant or you know a local business uh, to supply food for your event, and you don't think that Sodexo would do a good, you know, as good of a job. Um, I encourage you to um, apl uh, apply for the exception. Has anybody ever seen that form and filled it out? It's like a couple of lines and it's like your name and 
I mean, it's, it, it'll take you about 10 minutes to fill out. Um, and we can kind of even give you some suggestions on what type of words that you can use. Um, a, a good example that I'd like to use is um, the, uh, I think it was the Vietnamese Student Association um, that wanted, you know, this, um, like, Vietnamese food. And they wanted to order from Vietnam, you know, cafe or Vietnam restaurant. And we applied for the exception, um, and they just carefully worded it. Uh, they went for the tasting and everything with Sodexo. It didn't, it still wasn't authentic. Um, and so that was what we sort of used. We said that, you know, we are applying for the exception because the food was not as authentic. Well, don't you know they got approved right away? Um, so it's things like that. It's not like they're trying to, you know, it's just we need to follow policy. We are bound by the exclusivity contract. But there is a way in which we can get out of that, and I would just encourage you to, to follow that policy that, that in turn then protects us from any, um, any wrongdoing. Does that make sense? Okay, so when contracts um, are necessary. Um, okay, so they're necessary when you're bringing an external um, business or vendor to campus, um, and you're spending a good amount of money. Um, say you're spending, um, and it's Drexel funds, it's not um, your personal funds. So if you're using Drexel funds, um, and I would say, you know, a couple, a couple hundred here and there um, might not be as big of a deal, but if it's $3,000 and something goes wrong, you would really feel like, wow, $3,000 could go down the drain. Um, or just if you have any, um, you know, questions about, hmm, do we need to just have somebody review um, this? I would not recommend you reviewing the agreements. We have people, um, general counsel here on campus to help us with those things. Um, and that would actually be through our office. Um, we're familiar with the type of events that you plan. Um, we're here to advocate. Um, for all of your um, your needs and so then we can talk with general counsel um, to, and risk management um, about uh, your events to make sure that we are following policy or that there might be advice that they could give us that could really help us uh, have a really successful event um, If your event is off campus um, and you're spending also a large amount of money, uh, I encourage you to um, use our office to uh, have the contract reviewed. Why are contracts important? So can anybody answer that question? Why do you think contracts are important? You can just shout it out. Liability, good. Oh, I already expected that from you, Justin. <laughs> so contracts are good because it clarifies the expectations. Um, so if you're going to agree upon something, you're exchanging, uh, you know, three thousand dollars for someone else's services or um, product or um, you know, product services performance. Um, you know, that's one of those things where you want to make sure there's clarity in those expectations. And so these agreements and these contracts are really important. And um, it's complicated, it might sound complicated, but in actuality, um, you all are doing really amazing things. You're doing wonderful things. And the university doesn't want to get in the way of that. They actually encourage all of the um, graduate student organizations to do things and get out there into the community or have the community come to us. Um, those are all fantastic things, right? But there's just some ways in which we can protect ourselves. The same as um, a business would like to protect themselves or protect itself, um, Drexel University wants to do the same. Um, and so that is why it is very important that you use our office to just kind of let us run through some of the legal, um, you know, lingo or language on any of the documents. Um, 
With regard to contracts, uh, there are only a select few people who are considered um, authorized signers, or um, and they are authorized to sign um, various legal documents. So for you, if somebody says you need to sign this and date it and send it back to us, um, I would definitely just think twice, if it's a large amount of money or if it's a huge, um, impactful service uh, to please contact me um, and we will have general counsel review it we'll review it because sometimes I'll know what to look for and even I'm not authorized to sign stuff I actually have to send it through general counsel approves and then our associate dean or dean approves it okay so none of you should be signing anything um, and um, Taz I don't think none of us have authorized um, <laughs> signing privileges. There's only a select few um, at the university. If you're using Drexel funds, uh, you have to make sure that if somebody is requiring a signature, to make sure that you're not signing your name. Um, you also don't want to be personally liable um, as well. So if you sign it and say something falls through, like why would you want to do that? Then it would make you responsible for that money or that service or whatever it is. Does that make sense? Okay, um, another question that I get is, can I sign an agreement or invoice since it's not a contract? Um, and that is actually a contract. Um, in, in our eyes, that is considered a contract too. So even if it's just like an invoice and they say, please sign it, um, just have us uh, review it. Sometimes we don't even need general counsel. We have um, risk management to go over those things. Um, and uh, one of the other things that I uh, think is really important are liability forms. For example, we had an event, um, the trampoline event, um, and there wasn't a contract needed for that, but um, you know, we ran it by risk management and then they came back with like a waiver form and all of the participants ended up um, signing it just in case uh, you know, someone got injured um, jumping on the trampoline. Sounds really silly at first, right? But um, why do we do this? Because our society is very, <laughs> um, we live in a litigious society. You know, people want to sue, um, and people like to take a look at a big organization like Drexel University and think they're, you know, profiting, um, and 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 they want to take that chance. Um, even though, you know, and so that's why we have to do everything in our power to sort of make sure we're following policies and procedures. For the most part, I haven't said no. We have not had a no um, event yet. We have not had general counsel say, nope, not advisable to do. Um, so that's, that's good, right? That means uh, they've given us advice on, on things that we should uh, do and rules that we should follow. Um, and, so, and also that means that you're coming up with some really great ideas and having some great programs that um, are, are really um, making a great reputation for the university. Um, the last thing on this slide is the insurance. So I don't even understand this whole certificate of insurance or insurance waiver, um, insurance, um, you know, there's, they throw numbers like a million dollar coverage. I don't understand all that. And I don't expect you to either. So whenever I, um, whatever the businesses have a question about either they need our insurance or Drexel will come back and say, we need the business's insurance. Um, that's something that we have a whole office that deals with that. Again, you just work with our office, we'll um, send it directly to them or we'll collect it directly uh, from them. Um, it's just one of those confusing business legal things, um, which, you know, the university has all these things in place. Um, it's just when it's, uh, you just have to bring it up. Okay. So what's the next slide? Okay. So to make the, um, So to speed up the process, what we've done is we have a contract request form, and actually I had a thought, um, what I might do is just turn this in online, um, and so, um, but right now we have a contract request form. Um, I don't suggest that you just fill this out. I think that it's better if you just um, email me when you have a question about a contract or an agreement or whatever, and if I need you to fill out the form, I will. And the form is used um, by general counsel. 
Um, and so it's, th that's why I don't recommend you just going and, you know, wasting your time filling out a form. Sometimes, some things just don't even, you don't need to fill out the form. We can get you an answer right away. Um, but there is a form, and sometimes I will send that over to you. But um, when you want to speed up the process, get those invoices or quotes for pricing via email or fax, um, you know, to you. Or you could use our fax number, have it faxed, let them know. That this is let me know that this is coming in. Let Maggie know um, that this is coming in from the business, and that will really help us because we always need to just look at like what the business is, what is on their invoice. Um, if they have uh, certificates of insurance, um, you can always ask them for that. Um, there's a W-9 form um, or 1099. It depends, uh, but the the business or the vendor will know what the form is, they'll fill it out and they'll provide it to you. Um, because all those things will speed up the whole process of getting them paid uh, and working through the, the contracts. Um, any waivers, so some of the businesses have their own waiver forms, send that over to us and we'll just make sure that we're reviewing. They might already have uh, their own special contract. Um, and that's when you know you can send that over to us too, and we will review it and make sure everything is okay, um, and make sure we get it signed for you and send it back to the business. Um, one thing I do want to encourage you to do is to use the university procurement website, and uh, there's marketing if you want to get some marketing items. There's uh, companies on there for those. Uh, purposes, if you want to get t-shirts, there's coming. Those uh, businesses, organizations, or agencies do not require a contract at all because they are already pre-approved. Um, and the website's drexel.edu backslash procurement. Those bus companies on there, you don't need a contract because they're already approved. And they've been vetted by our Office of Business um, Services, and so we know that they're, we're gonna get great service from them. We know that they are going to be reliable, and so I do encourage you to check that site uh, and, and, and use any of those businesses. They will probably give you a really great price as well, uh, being that you are uh, a Drexel University uh, affiliate. Questions so far on really interesting policies and procedures. All right, um, let me just see if I needed anything else. Okay, um, my suggestion would be for you both, uh, for you to email us both, Maggie um, and I, because if I don't get, um, because we kind of serve as each other's backup, so if I don't get back to you and it's something that is sort of um, depressing, with time, at least Maggie can, um, you know, put it through, or vice versa. Okay, so hazing. Drexel, I'm just gonna read from this slide, um, because there's no other way to put it. Drexel University does not tolerate hazing of any form or fashion. No student should have to prove their worth or have to earn a right to be part of an organization. Student organizations are expected to know and abide by the hazing policy. Um, this is a conduct and community standard um, issue, so, uh, you know, it's common sense. I hope it is. All right, last thing that I'm gonna talk a little bit about is the alcohol policy. Um, student organizations cannot host on-campus events with alcohol unless you have a department sponsor. Um, so how this has happened in the past is, um, you know, the Office of Graduate Studies will uh, sponsor it along with the student organizations or with GSA. And that's how we have the on-campus uh, events. Off-campus, um, if your organization is granted permission to host off-campus events, um, the event is permitted to have alcohol because usually it's the restaurant or the bar that has licensure and has insurance um, uh, to uh, be responsible for their guests. Let's see. See? Yes. How would you guys uh, do BYOB? 
this is, is that even an option? Yes, it is an option on campus. No. Uh, oh, off like campus. Um, BYOB off campus, that's a new one. Um, but I think it's definitely possible. And as a matter of fact, I would say that I, th I would think that a BYOB would be great in a sense that you can actually control the amount of alcohol being distributed, which then decreases our liability. So um, I would definitely run it by risk management and, and general counsel, but my initial would be that I don't see, I mean, I think that would be something that would be feasible. Yeah. Um, BYOB on campus, there's a form uh, from the Office of Business Services that you can fill out. Same thing, you still have to have a department sponsor. So OGS um, has to sponsor it, but yeah, doing BYOB is okay. Um, and, and that's actually on my next slide, um, which is best practices. Uh, that would be sort of a best practice. Um, to limit your liability by limiting um, the distribution of alcohol. And so the alcohol policy right now um, might change, but I will let you guys know as soon as possible um, if there are any huge changes. So far, um, you know, that's our alcohol policy. Here's some things that we um, suggest in order to get uh, events um, approved to have alcohol. One, make sure you have food. So having $3,000 bill for just alcohol, being a nonprofit institution, um, is that really accomplishing the mission of what your event um, is, is being held for, right? Um, and no food. Um, there's reasons why we want you to also provide food. One, it soaks uh, of the alcohol. I, I mean, it's common sense. People are less liable. Um, it's you're going to be less liable, actually, um, because people are going to not get, you know, drunk as faster. Um, they d injury things like that. They get in the car, they drive, um, and get into a bad car accident. They can say, "I came from the GSA event," um, and then their parents might say, "Okay, we're suing Drexel University." Not very fun. So have food at your events. It's just a best practice, you know. Um, not everyone drinks alcohol, um, or not everyone wants to drink for five hours straight. So provide some non-alcoholic options. Soda, you know, mocktails is the new thing. Um, or it might be old, I don't know, I'm just old. Um, Another thing which I think saves money but also um, helps control um, the alcohol is limiting the number of drinks with drink tickets. So um, if you just have drink tickets and say, okay, two tickets, you know, or three tickets um, at like a banquet or a reception, that'll save you money, but also um, it protects your guests and make sure that guests have a good time, but at the same time, um, you know, not everything is. Uh, needs to be free. They can have a couple of drinks and then it turns into a cash bar. Um, that's okay, nothing's wrong with that, right? You'd be fine with that, you'd still go, right? Raise your hand, come on. Good, 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 good. Um, another thing that you could do is you could provide drink specials um, at the location, so dollar, one dollar beer, or a dollar, you know, uh, what is it? I don't even know. I drink hard liquor. Um, what do they call it? Top shelf or whatever, you know, whatever. There's just ways um, to get those uh, drink specials um, and you can save uh, money on, on alcohol. Um, three other points I want to make. Uh, when you have an event um, and say it's like uh, six to nine, and it's something that I actually talked to you about, Adam, um, where, you know, you don't have to serve, you don't have to have like open bar from six to nine to protect you know, um, the integrity of the event, but why not just say, okay, six to seven open bar, or six to eight and the bar closes at eight, um, or last call is at eight for the event. You know, then that says, okay, you have an hour left, like people can sober, have time to sober up, they won't um, have three hours of, of binge drinking. Again, you have to ask yourself, does that accomplish the mission of the event? 
or um, the goal of the event. Um, so there's things like that. I mean, even the bars close and have last call. So it's okay. And they have last call for what reason? It's because they don't want to be liable either. Having people leave um, stumbling out or even passed out. Um, which actually leads me to my next point. Um, I would like for you to think about when you have a large event to consider um, having taking turns with your group leaders um, or executive board and saying, who's gonna be the person that does like a clean sweep at the end of the night? Um, and what I mean by that is it's gonna be making sure that the people who are Drexel or the, pe the guests that came to the event um, are not passed out in the bathroom or passed out outside on the sidewalk, have a way to get home, um, have a way um, to um, sober up even. Um, but yes, I would highly recommend that you have one person uh, just do, do that for each event because that's really important. Um, someone could be throwing up in, the, in one of the bathroom stalls um, and you wouldn't know. They could be unconscious and you wouldn't know. Um, so it's, it's one of those things that I just think, you know, looking out for one another, uh, please do that. It will um, save you lots of trouble and the guilt of just feeling like, wow, I wish I, you know, would have thought of that. Yes, question. If something like that does happen and you have to take someone home with a cat or something like that, um, or if it's a group of people, but what happens with the funding for that? I would say it's on the person. Yeah. And if you're going to cover their cab ride, I'd say, all right, you need to pay me back on Monday. <laughs> um, you know, I, knock on wood, we have not had that uh, happen. Um, okay, I lied. <laughs> it happened once. Um, but that was different because they came in a paramedic. Um, yeah, EMT drove them to the hospital. Um, so that's the, yeah. yeah. I would just say cover their cab ride. When, the, the peace of mind knowing that someone got home safely and then just being like, yeah, you owe me $10 on Monday. Um, you know, that I would feel so much better knowing that. Um, and, you know, there's usually, if, if there is an event, you know that we know that the event's happening, typically. Um, so you can always, always contact us. Send us a quick email and just be like, this is what happened. Just wanted to let you know. Um, and actually, any, all of our public safety, security, um, within the Philadelphia area, when they know that it's a Drexel student, it actually gets called back to the university um, and uh, the dean of, uh, the dean on duty, the dean of students will usually check in, um, and uh, the emergent, the person's emergency contact will be uh, called. I mean, there's a whole process um, that ends up happening, um, and so you know, as long as you um, know, call 911 or you know, get that person home, or if there's something, um, there are processes processes in place um, that will support the student. Okay. Any other questions about the alcohol? Okay. Okay. Uh, additional resources. This is my last slide. Um, okay. Office of Campus Activities. It's the lower level of the Cree Student Center. Um, they have a student organization resource center where they have a uh, popcorn machine, game show buzzers, helium, balloons. Um, a poster maker, copier. Um, I think the poster maker might cost a little bit, um, but you are free to use those. Um, same as uh, Center City in student affairs. We have um, balloons, a helium tank. We have. We don't have a popcorn machine though, but we have other things. We have paper, scissors, any supplies that you need. Um, these are two resources that student organizations can use, as well as the staff, the professional staff. Make sure that you know you tap into us. We can help you with some marketing ideas. Uh, various staff have various listservs that they can send out to um, the student body or various student groups. Um, 
So I encourage you to use those resources. We can help you get um, an organization email address that's at Drexel. Um, we can help you with listservs. And also we can give you ideas for alternate funding. Um, there's the Good Idea Fund. How many of you have heard of that? Great, a few people. Good Idea Fund. If you have a good idea, they've got money for it. You just um, fill out a proposal. Um, and it's been great to bring really wonderful um, speakers uh, to campus or wonderful um, exhibits to campus even. Uh, keep that in mind. Alumni Association grants, if you want to do stuff with alumni, bringing alumni in, the Alumni Association grant is really wonderful. I think it is up to $750. Um, but also you have their uh, support in terms of getting a list of uh, potential alum uh, for your event. Fundraising, we can help you with uh, creating cost centers on campus. Uh, there's the Commission for Activities and Programs, which is out of the um, Business Services, Business and Retail Services Office. Um, I think that is like up to $200 if you, or no, I'm sorry, that is uh, free Coke products. Um, if you wanna just have, um, use uh, Coca-Cola, Sprite, and um, any of their products. I, I forget their water brand, but. Dasani. Dasani, yeah. Um, they will um, provide free drinks for you, uh, for your event. And of course, we have connections to all the other student governments from across all the campuses. Uh, as well as organizations from across all the campuses. So use us as a resource um, for collaboration or to help you market with uh, things. And I am sorry I went over time, but that I think concludes my presentation. And Carol, your turn. I think there was some overlaps. Does anybody have any questions for me or Maggie? We'll be here, so you can definitely you can definitely um, ask us afterwards. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Carol, treasurer of uh, GSA. Welcome to a uh, short meeting. No matter you come from, uh, you come for a uh, free food or the free money later. Okay. So I will go over the funding uh, policy and the process. So first, uh, I will introduce the GSA officer for this year. And as everyone knows, the president is who. You don't know it, so no money for you guys. <laughs> Justin, okay. And the uh, vice president of uh, academic affairs, Kabang. Oh, it's over there. And the uh, vice president of uh, student life, Adam. And uh, our secretary, Prashan. And uh, me, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Sophia is our webmaster. Okay, and Allison is our uh, archives, and uh, Jimmy is our uh, spot sports chair. chair. Uh, sports chair. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Teresa is our uh, graphic design and social chair. Okay, so um, we have a uh, two cost centers. First. Uh, it's a 17 call center. It's all a GS fund go through this fund, uh, this centers, and the last one is a uh, 71 call centers. It's all for the fundraiser or deals or the donations. And uh, you can uh, look through it, but uh, the most important thing is uh, this red right thing. I could not. Uh, you cannot have the off-campus bank account, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and, okay, this is all the funding options. I will break into each one. And, uh, okay, this is the more, most important. It's the uh, JS funding information. And, uh, 
Okay, so first of all, you need to uh, be organized by the OCA, and then you know, suggest like if you have a, a event, you must like uh, fill out the pre-event form two weeks ahead, and you're gonna fill out everything like how many people are gonna be in this event, and uh, what's this event for, and uh, what's the money cost, like food or alcohol or everything. And uh, then after this event, you're gonna fill out the post-event form as well, and also uh, upload as many as pictures on Facebook and tag GSA. And uh, for the annual fundings, like allocations, you're gonna uh, fill out the information, like how many people in these organizations and what's your plan for the whole year. And then you're gonna submit it uh, to us by the end of week two of the four quarters. And, uh, and make sure like we approve each event just by uh, this will benefit the whole graduate student communities, and and the, and we really encouraging the collaboration, like connections, uh, for each event. And the next is the policies. You can go through the GSC website. It called it like you can find out how to access the fund and what's the money can do and can out and the rest of this stuff, okay? And uh, make sure you're gonna submit all the financial forms to uh, OJS uh, to test or either send them. And the next is uh, the CAP funding. It's uh, like Coke machines. Most organizations use it for the, um, like a t-shirt. Uh, to uh, print a t-shirt or anything. And the next is the uh, Alumni Association Grant. You also can apply through this. And uh, this is just up to uh, 2000 per grant. Uh, we, we want to oh, that's great. So this is how, where you can get the financial forms, either GSA or CAP and the Alumni Association Grant. And this is where you're gonna return all the forms. Uh, again, the post, the pre-event form, you must be submitted two weeks ahead of the each event. And uh, the last but not the least is we really encouraging the co uh, the connection of each organizations. Suggest so like uh, if you wanna hold the event, we really. Um, I hope you can connect with uh, another group or like one or two. Like uh, if you are high school organizations, you can collaborate with uh, like art or uh, science or engineering. And we're really like um, encouraging this kind of event. And uh, next is we will have a four synodic meeting. I think it's next Thursday at a World Cafe, so welcome. All right, I think I go through everything. Any questions? Or Justin, do you want to add something? Okay. Oh, yeah. What's the deadline? Uh, the week two of a four quarters. Quarters. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Will any funds be available for the welcome back weeks? Uh, will? Yes. I think so, yeah. Yeah. When we are registering our organization, we need to provide a number of work for those purposes. Do we have to do that again with GSA? Yes. I would just answer yes. <laughs> 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 We're just gonna take a quick, like, one minute break while I switch over. Just give me one second.
All right, I know we're losing you, so let's just get through the rest of this. Um, my name is Sandra, as it has been said. I am um, with the Office of Guard Studies, um, and the infamous Mr. Taz Kwok was not able to join us today, um, but I'm sure he would have some really funny jokes to tell if he was here, so maybe we were spared. Um, <laughs> but I know that, um, you know, he would be here. I'm not sure why my font is black, so if you can't see it, just know that um, it'll be posted afterwards. I'm not sure why it was changed to black. Um, okay, so let's get started. So this is um, just grad study stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know why my... It looks right on here. I don't know. Yeah, I, I just don't know why it's black. It's going to be really hard to see. That's okay. All right, so just so you know, I'm going to send all this information out um, afterwards, too. But anyway, this is our office, Office of Graduate Studies. We are located here in um, the building. We're upstairs on the second floor in the Randall Hall section of Maine. If you know anything about the building, there, it's all connected. It's very confusing, especially for a new employee. Um, so we're up there. Um, as you know, we are off also, um, you know, we offer free coffee and snacks for our students. And we're there if you have a quick question about an event you're planning or just looking to get some ideas. Um, you know, we're there as a resource. Um, and here's our contact information. We are also on social media, as Maggie mentioned. Um, you know, uh, Student Affairs and our office really work hard to blast out events and information. So if you have an event coming up, definitely share it with both of our offices and we'll do the best we can to just blast it. Um, here is our office again. Um, we are four people um, under Dr. Tekka Lim, who is the Associate Vice Provost for Grad Studies. He wears many hats, but one of them is the advisor, fa uh, faculty advisor for the GSA. All right, so the role of GSA, uh, OGS, I'm sorry, Office of Grad Studies. So we um, do many things other than help the GSA, even though sometimes I feel like that's my only job. Just kidding, <laughs> love you guys. Um, yeah, we deal with a lot of the academic affairs side of um, graduate programs, um, and then also, you know, advise the GSA. Okay, we're also a coffee shop and an aquarium. If you haven't um, been into our office lately, um, then you wouldn't know that, but we are a coffee shop and an aquarium, and we have many living organisms besides <laughs> the four of us. <laughs> okay, so yeah, now to the more boring stuff. Um, reimbursement, so any time that you are making a purchase for your student organization, um, whether you're doing it out of pocket or you're looking to do um, a check request to pay a vendor. That's something that you're gonna be working with our office on because we have the administrative um, sort of control over the GSA uh, cost centers as Carol mentioned. Um, so we're gonna be the liaison between the GSA and um, the university department such as accounts payable, you know, billing, anything like that. Um, Anytime you have an event where you have a vendor that you know you paid for or you paid for food on your own or something, you have to submit reimbursement requests within two weeks, okay? People sometimes wait all quarter and then they come to us with receipts and they're like, I want this money back. Like, where were you all quarter? That's not, that, that's a red flag to us. So just make sure you have your, your things in line. You, you collected receipts and invoices and things like that, and you're prepared with the appropriate forms, and we'll talk about those in just a second. So the two forms that um, are gonna be important are a check request form and a cash request form. Um, obvious. <laughs> a check request form is going to be used Okay, to pay um, any external vendors, this is probably vendors who are recognized by the university, as Fee mentioned, that's important. Um, you know, preferred vendors, um, and then obviously if they're not, then you have to follow some of the other procedures with the tax and insurance information that Fee mentioned, and you can always refer back to, um, to her office if you need help with that. But anyway, a check request is going to be used to pay a vendor who has provided an invoice or you have receipts or, or something to prove that you need to pay this vendor an amount of money for certain services or, or items. Um, so you're gonna put that information down on the form 
and um, put the appropriate cost centers as well. And it, you know, if you need help with that, we can fill it out with you um, in our office. But what's important to note here is that um, check requests are used for things that have been either that you're going to pay for. For example, if you need to pay City Tap House for a big happy hour that you, you are having, you're gonna wanna do that ahead of time with an invoice. Or if you've already made a purchase with a personal credit card or debit card, um, a group of yours, um, or our office P card, which I'll talk about um, in a little bit, um, that's when you use a check request. Or if you've paid for something in cash, over $100. Under $100, you're just gonna do the cash request form, okay? If you went out and you had to buy a couple sodas for a meeting, you know, and a, a you know, pie of pizza, and you just use cash out of your pocket, you'll save all of the receipts, you will post them on eight and a half by 11 paper, and you will come in with a completed <coughs> cash request form, okay? And we will sign it for you, and you will bring it um, down to Drexel Central to get your reimbursement via cash. Anything under $100, that would be fine. Okay, so then the check request form, a little more difficult. Um, again, these forms are on the GSA website. You can also find them on the accounts payable department website. Um, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but just look at those forms, become familiar with them. You'll have to fill out sections one and two with the cost center and the information about what the purchase was. Um, and then we can help you fill out the rest. And again, this is all gonna be available for you to review. Just don't want to take up too much of your time. Here's what it looks like. This is um, Taz, Taz Cash Craver Quacks example. Um, <laughs> thought I would share that with you guys. But yeah, it's just a couple of different lines. Um, not too difficult. Um, for the cash request form, very straightforward. Just the cost center, your name, um, the items that were purchased, and then we'll help you sign it and you can bring it down to the to Drexel Central. Very simple, looks very similar. Okay, now here's the important part. Um, there are some additional items required, especially for a check request. Important, important, important. Anytime you make a purchase for a student organization, you must provide us with the original Receipts, original receipts. Do not crumple them in your pocket. Do not throw them in your car. Do not leave them on the street. We need the original receipts. If you go out and buy, you know, um, I don't know, a bullhorn for a field day event, you know, and you bought it for $30 from Walmart, save the receipts, okay? Important. Um, if you really like me, you will post them on just regular eight and a half by 11 paper so I don't have to do it for everyone that comes in. Um, and then secondly, if you use a credit or debit card, if it's your personal card, if it's a friend's card, if it's your advisor's card, whosoever card it is, we need a bank statement. That's that thing that you get in the mail or, what, or you go online and you sign into your account and it shows all of the purchases from that monthly period. We need a bank statement for that credit or debit card that shows the charge. Now again, you can black out anything else. We don't need to know what you bought or when. Just wanna see that charge, it's very important. And then if it's for a GSA um, event, you're gonna need um, also just information, a flyer, a Facebook event, a printout of an email that you sent out about the event, just so we know what it was for, when, et cetera. Um, and then if you're traveling for a student organization, you have to pick up, I don't know, a, uh, I'm trying to think of something. You have to pick up supplies for an event, um, and you know it's part of your, you know, responsibility as um, a member of an organization. We can do reimbursement for mileage. There is a form for it. We don't reimburse gas receipts. Um, you know, business services only reimburses for mileage, and you'll have to just print out a map of where you went, how much, how many miles it was, and then calculate the mileage, which is 56.5 cents per mile. So we can do that also. Trying to get through it. Okay. So um, accounts payable. So these forms, the check request form especially, comes to us. We don't give you money. We don't have cash in our office for you. Um, everything goes through either um, the cashier's office for cash or accounts payable for all of your cost centers. Um, anything that's credit, debit card, check, all goes through accounts payable. And that's their information there. Um, you'll see on the form you'll be able to either opt to pick up the check 
or you can have it mailed to yourself or directly to a vendor, but you'll want to follow up with them, not us. We have no idea where your check is. Just follow up with accounts payable. We can call them for you if you don't feel comfortable, but just know that they're in charge of getting you your checks. And they do take about two to three weeks to process. So if you're having an event, plan ahead. If you need to pay a vendor the day of, plan ahead, get an invoice. That will make it a lot easier for you. Okay, finally, Office of Graduate Studies does hold a P card. It is not supposed to be used for our grad student organizations. However, we know that sometimes you get in a bind, you need to purchase, you know, um, wristbands that you forgot for an event real quick and you know you just need to get it from Amazon and just be done with it. Um, just come on into our office or write us an email, give us a call, let us know. It's last minute, I'm really sorry, but we really need X and can you just buy it with the P card? Now, it's not guaranteed. Um, sometimes the P card's not available, sometimes we don't have the funds for you, but just know it's a last resort emergency option if you need to just purchase something real quick. Or, if you are in an organization, a group, and you're doing, you know, a dinner or a meeting, and you know you don't have the funds, it's maybe it's two or three thousand dollars for whatever you're doing, and you don't have the funds, and you weren't provided an invoice ahead of time, and you just need to get it paid, just let us know ahead of time. You know, we're, we have this problem, we're not going to be able to cover it on our own and wait for reimbursement. So, you know, is it an option for us? And, and we'll let you know. But it is a last resort, so just know that. Finally, if you do use the P-Card, very important, um, Dr. Lim's reputation is on the line when we don't get receipts. It has been a problem in the past. Anytime you use our office P-Card, we will need original receipts, invoices, um, copy of an announcement or flyer for the event that you're doing, um, and it has to come into our office immediately. Literally, when you swipe that card, you come to our office next. I mean, that is just the next step. We've had missing receipts and, you know, procurement has red flagged graduate studies for all of the crazy purchases that you guys make. So just please keep these things in mind. Um, and then coming to the end, just um, event support. Um, our office as fees is, is here to help you guys out. We are passionate about what you guys are doing. Grad students are awesome. You know, we want students to come out to your events. There's no point in having events if you're not engaging students on campus and, and that's what it's all about so we are here we can blast emails we can put it all over our office whatever you need to do just let us know ahead of time you know sometimes people come to us the day of an event and they say oh we're having this and I said great good luck like I what do you want me to do um, we can get posters for you you see all these beautiful GSA posters a week in advance let me know I'll print a poster for you you know whatever you guys need just let us know we, oh and the other thing is we can if you're doing something with tickets or registration, you know, we can, we can help, or you know, fees office, we can help with that. Just let us know what you need. Um, here is just an upcoming event tip. Um, Books and Bagels is our monthly program featuring our very own grad students talking about their research. Um, free lunch is provided as always. Next one is Friday, August 30th, 12 to one, here in the lounge. Okay. Also, just keep these on your radar. New students coming, we want to engage them, right? So we have International Graduate Student Orientation on Wednesday, September 11th, and Regular Grad Student Orientation Thursday, September 12th. You should have gotten notice from the board members of the GSA that you can host a table at the um, Grad Student Orientation at the Dragon Expo. It's 4.30 to 5.30 in Baracus Grand Hall. Um, there's gonna be a social associated with it so it's going to be really nice food and drink and you know students can come and ask you about your organization so if you haven't already sign up have someone host you know your organization there you can share a table with another organization you can bring you know stuff to hand out um, you know any any swag to give away whatever whatever you guys want to do but that's a great place to start recruiting members um, for your organization <coughs> And just know that you have to just bring your own like sign, signage, let everyone know who you are. If you want a tablecloth, whatever it is, just bring it along. And I'll make sure we send out the link to register for a table. Finally, congratulations because you are the new leaders here at Drexel. You're gonna help lead our grad students into you know hanging out and having a great experience here. So just keep 
that energy going and you know the sky's the limit bring your ideas to the table and you know if you're not sure ask always ask if you think it's too crazy or whatever just come and ask we'll try to work with you and and just make it happen and i know fee is also fee and maggie are very open to ideas you know just let us know i think that is it for me any questions about graduate studies related things yes Right. But it doesn't, like all the requirements are met, like it's not to a venue, it's not, like there's no invoice, it's just kind of like they raise money to help them lower the cost of like airfare and stuff like that. So you're talking about, are you talking about a deposit or how? It's like in like, it's for physical therapy, it's like in our fund, like how would you retrieve that back without a fund? Come talk to me afterwards. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I don't know if that's too much Anybody about that. Anybody have questions for our, any of us? Yeah, any, any questions at all? I know it's a lot of information. Um, when you have some time, definitely.